This time we're going to be talking about using bandpass filters to extract drum gate information from a drum sample. There are lots of ways to trigger drums in your Eurorack. There are special drum sequencers, there are your standard, you know, 8-step based sequencers. There's even a few modules like the Mutable Instruments grids that give you the option of sending out preset drum patterns uh, and varying them up but it can be useful to get real drumming in through real loops. So what I'm gonna to do today is use a set of bandpass filters to extract out information from a drum loop and use that to trigger signals on our modular. So this is something that I thought up uh, driving home from work one day. Uh, there's nothing new under the sun, so I'm sure someone has done this before, but it worked out better than I thought it would once I got down to try it out. So. Once again, we're going to use our completely obscure and unknown drum loop as the sample to extract the kick and snare information uh, and use that to control stuff on our rack. So we'll set this up from scratch so you can see how easy it is. But, but first, let's review how a drum kit fills out the frequency spectrum and how we're going to get that information. The modern drum kit has evolved in a pretty interesting way such that each component contributes to a specific frequency band uh, and what we can do is isolate this, these bands uh, using bandpass filters. So let's consider uh, your standard drum kit. So first we're going to look at the kick drum and uh, if we look at the audible range from 20 to 20 kilohertz, uh, the kick drum is going to take up a lot of low frequency data. So let's just draw in uh, a makeshift uh, kick drum here. Okay so that's our kick drum. Every time the kick drum hits you're going to get this low frequency with plump uh, maybe a little bit of higher frequency content, uh, but it's all going to be in this low frequency range. Now, similarly, we can look at the snare. So let's say that's our snare drum, and the snare drum makes a lot of noise, right? It makes a lot of broadband noise when you have those snares rattling off the bottom of the drum. Uh, but it's generally going to be mid-range. Uh, this could be like six to 800 hertz or something like that around this area. Um, but it's going to be more of a mid-range type of thing. And then to fill out the bookends uh, between the kick uh, and the top end, uh, we're going to have cymbals. So that's kind of an ugly looking curve, but you get the idea, right? The cymbals, like I said, bookend with the kick. You got really low frequency, you've got a little high frequency, and then your snare and your toms are also gonna fill in in the middle here. So then what we wanna do is take our bandpass filter. And for this, I have a fixed filter bank, which I'll show you when we get to the modular. But if you have two filters, each of which have a bandpass mode, what you effectively wanna do is center those bands on either the kick or the snare. All right, so let's say these dotted lines represent your band pass filters. Uh, a low pass filter uh, allows low frequencies to pass by. Uh, a high pass filter chops off low frequencies, allows high frequencies to pass by. A band pass filter allows a narrow section of the frequency band to pass by. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the output of these band pass filters, and you can see they're going to be focused on uh, whatever we need to for the kick and the snare in our samples. And then what we're going to do is adjust the amplitude of the output of those such that they just barely trigger the voltage necessary uh, to trigger, in our case, maths or any envelope generator or function generator. So we're taking the frequency component, the audio data of a drum loop, we're gonna slice it up into sections with our bandpass filters, and those are gonna be used to trigger our envelopes, uh, which we'll take a look at on the modular now. So let's review what we have set up ahead of time. Uh, we have our drum loop being played uh, from the sample player on our disting, and that's going to a mult uh, just below off screen, and that's going to two places. First, it's gonna be going into our filter, which I'll get to in a second. Uh, and the next is going to go into this channel just so we can blend it in and hear it as a reference. So here that is again. And the other channel I have set up already is this long cable that goes from our quantum rainbow, which is our noise generator, and that's sending pink noise into the Optimix channel 1 here. So that's going to be used as uh, our makeshift snare noise right now. So that's what we'll be turning on and off. Now, as I said, the drum loop is getting molted, so that's going over here. The second copy is going into our uh, Make Noise FXDF, or Fixed Filter, or Fixed F, which has six bandpass filter outputs. 
And the trick is to figure out which one of these best correlates to the kick or the snare in the sample you're using. And that's going to change depending on your source material. Uh, but we'll try a couple of different spots here so you can see the difference and we'll figure it out. I'm going to use the 12 dB per octave input, which means uh, the filter slope will be steeper and a little more resonant, which means we're going to be able to tune out any excess noise aside from what we want a little bit better than the 6 dB per octave. So the molt will go into there. Our kick drum is going to be created by our DPO. So we're going to take the output from oscillator A and we're going to use some FM to create some funky noises. So that's going to be our kick drum. It'll make more sense when we get to it. So what we're going to do is take the one of the lower bandpass filter outputs, in this case the 198 hertz uh, output, and we're going to send that into channel 2 of the maths. And the reason we're sending it into channel 2 is that we're going to use it as an attenuator because we just want the voltage output from this to barely tickle the voltage necessary to trigger uh, channel 1. So then we're going to take the output of channel 2, put that into the trigger input of channel 1, and then we're going to take the output of channel 1, and we're going to put that into the CV control of our Optimix with our FM oscillator input. So now all that's left to do is to um, raise up the level of channel 2 so that the extracted or filtered kick drum signal will just start to tickle the trigger necessary voltage to trigger uh, channel 1. So let's look at that. Okay, so now we have uh, a voltage which may not make sense as you hear it now, but let's bring in the drum loop and see what we got. Okay, that seems to work pretty well. So, why does this matter? Now you've got a kick signal and you've got everything under voltage control. You've got the duration. Okay, you can long short, you can tune up and down. You could use noise, you could do anything you want. So now you have complete voltage control over this uh, human played uh, sample uh, of original audio recording. And you're translating that into gate information. And it syncs up perfectly with your source material. Now all that's left to do is the same thing for channel uh, three and four of the maths, which we're going to use for the snare output. So for that, we'll go up to, we'll go two bands higher, and we'll put that into channel three. And the reason you have the attenuators here is if you don't attenuate the signal before you use it to trigger, uh, they can tend to overlap a little bit. So you want them to, like I said before, just barely touch the voltage required uh, I forget what it is, like probably one and a half volts or something, to trigger uh, channel four. So now we'll send the channel four output of maths into our noise channel. We'll turn that up. And then we'll ch plug channel three into channel four. And we'll start to turn that up. Now, that's interesting because if you don't turn the voltage up just enough, all you get is the hard hit, but you don't get any of that kind of flam sound from the lighter hits. We want to get a little bit more, so let's keep turning it up a little bit. And again, now you can do whatever you want with it. You can make it longer hits. Different colors of noise. You could use another FM source, but now you've got a drum loop that's playing in your modular. You've translated audio data into time-based trigger data or gated data. Um, so this could be useful, and this could open up a whole new world of... Um, 
drum loops or drum patterns in your rack without needing a specialized module like a grids. And you don't even need a maths per se. All you need are some attenuators uh, and the bandpass filters. The bandpass filter is the real star of the show because that's what gets uh, each individual subsection out to the rest of the um, module. So I have a maths here, and this is using up all four channels, uh, but that's just because maths is really well suited to this. But any, any envelope generator um, or function generator with a trigger input and some attenuators uh, that you could have in any other module in front of it, and then some way of getting the drum loop into your modular will get you towards this uh, humanized um, gate pattern in your Eurorack kit. So hopefully this is helpful. Thank you.